In this video lecture, we're going to be talking about the concept of price elasticity of demand. We'll begin by defining price elasticity of demand, and then we'll go on to some graphical analysis to see how price elasticity of demand can change depending on the slope of two different demand curves on the same axis. Let's start with the definition. Price elasticity of demand, which we'll refer to as PED, is simply a measure of the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. There's a simple formula for calculating the price elasticity of demand. PED is always equal to the percentage change in the quantity demanded of a good in response to a percentage change in price. PED is not the same as the slope of the demand curve. The slope of a demand curve is always the change in quantity divided by the change in price. But in this case, we're, we're comparing percentage changes. So to determine the price elasticity of demand, we must always calculate or determine the percentage change in the quantity resulting from a particular percentage change in price. At this point, we'll add a couple of price and quantity combinations to our two demand curves on the graph on the left. Notice that in our graph on the left, we have two demand curves. D1, the red demand curve, represents the demand for a particular good. And notice that it is steeper than D2, the demand for another good, which is generally more flat. So let's examine what happens when the price of these two goods falls from $10 to $7. How does the quantity demanded react depending on the slope of the two demand curves? First, let's look at what happens when the price falls from $10 to $7 for the good represented by D1. We notice that as the price falls from 10 to 7, the quantity demanded increases from 4 units to 5 units. To calculate the price elasticity of demand, we can plug these numbers into our PED formula and find out what the PED for the good represented by D1 is. First, we must calculate the percentage change in quantity and the percentage change in price before we can divide these two by each other. The formula for calculating the percentage change in quantity is simply the change in the quantity, we'll call it Q2 minus Q1, divided by the original quantity of Q1. Similarly, the percentage change in the price will be the new price, P2, minus the original price of P1, divided by the original price of P1. Now all we must do is plug our numbers from the graph into this equation. So to calculate our PED for the good represented by D1, we simply have to plug in the numbers from our graph. So we see that the percentage change in quantity is 5 minus 4 divided by the original quantity of 4. And the percentage change in price is 7 minus 10 divided by the original price of 10. Simplify this equation and we see that the percentage change in quantity is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. And the change in price is negative 3 over 10 or negative 0 0.3. Now we can solve for the price elasticity of demand for the good represented by D1. 0 0.25 divided by negative 0 0.3 equals negative 0 0.833. The price elasticity of demand for the good represented by D1 is negative 0 0.833. What this number tells us is the responsiveness of consumers of the good represented by D1 to a change in the price. For every 1% decrease in the price of good one, the quantity demanded will increase by 0.833%. For every 1% increase in the price, the quantity demanded will decrease by 0.833%. Hence, the PED for good one is a measure of the responsiveness to price changes for good one. To compare the PED for good one to good two, we must calculate the price elasticity of demand for good two. We'll use the same formula, the same method we did to calculate the PED for good 1. So PED for good 2 equals Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1, that'll give us the percentage change in quantity, divided by P2 minus P1 over P1, that will give us the percentage change in the price. So let's plug our numbers into the equation here. Q2 for D2 for the good represented by D2 is 9. The original quantity was 4. We'll divide that by the original quantity of 4. The price change is the same. So we see that the new price, P2, is 7 minus the original price of 10 divided by the original price of 10. Now we can simplify this. We'll see that 5 over 4 divided by 
negative 3 over 10 will give us the PED. 5 over 4 is 1.25 and negative 3 over 10 is negative 0 0.3. Let's find out what the price elasticity demand for good 2 is. The price elasticity of demand for good 2 equals 4.167. This tells us that for every 1% decrease in the price, the quantity demanded increases by 4.167%. So in this case, when the price decreases by 30%, the quantity demanded increased by 125% from 4 units to 9 units. Clearly we can see that the price elasticity of demand for good 2 is much greater than it was for good 1. And in fact, one thing we need to point out now is that in both of these calculations we saw that there was a negative sign. Since there is always an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded, the PED for a good will always be negative. To simplify and to make our analysis a little bit easier, we will always just take the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand. So we can say that the price elasticity of demand for good 1 is 0.83 and the price elasticity of demand for good 2 is 4.167. Since there will always be a negative sign, it's not necessary to put the negative sign in our formula, and we can instead just consider the absolute values of these two calculations. Now we've calculated our price elasticity of demands for the two demand curves represented on our graph here. For D1, the price elasticity of demand is 0.833. This, of course, equals the percentage change in quantity, which was 25%, over the percentage change in price, which was negative 30%. And since we take the absolute value, we end up with the positive number of 0 0.833. The price elasticity of demand for good 2, of course, equaled the increase, the percentage increase in the quantity of the good, which was 125%, over the percentage decrease in the price, which was negative 30%, and we took the absolute value to come up with the figure of 4.167. Both these numbers tell us the responsiveness of consumers to these two goods to price changes. For every 1% change in price of good 1, the quantity demanded will change by 0.833% in the opposite direction. Whereas for every 1% change in price for good, do, good 2, the quantity demanded will change by 4.167% in the opposite direction. Clearly, demand for good 2 is more price elastic than it is for good 1. In other words, consumers of good 2 are more responsive to price changes than consumers of good 1. This is reflected in the greater slope or the steeper slope of D1. As we can see, D1 is much steeper compared to D2 on the same axis. We can see that consumers of good 2 are more responsive to changes in price than consumers of good 1. So how can we interpret the PED, co PED coefficient, or the number we found when we divided the percentage change in quantity by the percentage change in price of these two goods? Economists have several different ways to describe price elasticity of demand. If the price elasticity of demand coefficient is greater than zero, but less than one, we say that demand is inelastic. In other words, the percentage change in quantity will always be less than the percentage change in price if the PED coefficient is less than 1. If the PED coefficient equals 1, we say that demand is unit elastic, meaning that that for every 1% change in the price of a good, the percent change in quantity will be equal 1 as well. In other, or, in other words, for every 5% change in the price of a good, the quantity demanded will change by 5%. So if there is a PED coefficient of 1, then the percent change in quantity will be identical to the percentage change in price. That is called unit elastic. Finally, if the PED coefficient is greater than 1, then it is said that demand is elastic, meaning that the percent change in quantity will be greater than the particular percentage change in price 
For example, if the price of a good decreases by 10% and the PED coefficient is 2, then that would mean that the quantity demanded would increase by 20%. If PED were equal to 3, then a 10% decrease in price can increase the quantity demanded by 30%. As long as the coefficient is greater than 1, demand is elastic. If the PED coefficient is equal to 1, demand is unit elastic. And if the PED coefficient is less than 1, but greater than 0, then demand is inelastic. Since we always take the absolute value of our coefficient, PED will never be less than 0. The higher the PED for a good, the more elastic the demand for that good. The lower the PED, the less elastic demand. Once again, price elasticity demand is a measure of the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. The closer PED is to zero, the less responsive consumers are, meaning that there will be a lower quantity demanded, or sorry, a lower percentage change in quantity demanded than the percentage change in price as long as PED is less than one. If the PED coefficient is greater than one, then the percentage change in quantity will always be greater than the percentage change in price, indicating that consumers are relatively responsive to price changes. This concludes our lesson on price elasticity of demand. In our next lesson, we'll talk about other forms of elasticity, including price elasticity of supply, income elasticity of demand, and cross-price elasticity of demand.